important win because I just think the face hunter could really struggle here. Yeah, I would agree. It already looks like across everything left for Possessi, its best matchup could be. I guess the Handlock or the Garot Rogue, depending on how you see it. I think both those matchups are really, really close, just like a lot of the matchups in this meta, which is why Conquest is not leaning towards that hard of a target strategy for most of our players, just coming up with soft targets and playing decks that they feel are best against the field. Glory on the play with a one drop, already a very big deal if he manages to land the Shima in particular. That's a minion that is resistant to Guardian Og Merchant and could put Glory in the driver's seat, right? The implications of sticking a minion on turn one means that if you get um, Adorable Infestation, you can start taking value trades. If you oh, get yeah. a minion that buffs the attack, you could trade up. It's just so important. I cannot overstate. Possessi going with the full mole, though, and gets himself a... Interesting hand, I'll say, with the potential for turn one Oracle of a Loon. If there wasn't a turn one play for Glory, you would absolutely slam that down in a heartbeat. But now, of course, things are getting a little scary. You could still go for it and pray that there's no answer. But if Quick Shot comes down, things start to look a little messy for Possessi. <laughs> This is a bit weird how it pans out because Glory, the rest of his hand after the Demon Companion is really slow, kind of a disaster, I want to say, but um, it is the kind of hand that allows him to answer the Loon off the top or on turn one if Possessi wanted. He deviates to the Peasant instead, which I think is very reasonable. Um, the only real punish for that would be a True Aim Crescent at this point. Otherwise, Glory would have to take a pretty awkward trade. Um, and Possessi gets to maintain both of these ramp spells to maybe get to play a loon with Anoyatron. He is just going to drop the Anoyatron here, though, and leave the possibility for copying any two drop he top decks next turn. Yeah, I think reasonable. There's the possibility as well for a loon coin adorable Vait Marsul if you just want to get a whole bunch of 1-1s one on the board uh, if there's literally nothing else playable on that turn. Uh, but you're absolutely right. He is holding out for a three drop here, most likely. A uh, two drop, sorry. Reflect. Well, he gets the three drop, but the alternative mm. play you outlined works out pretty nicely for him here. It's still a lot of minions that are awkward for Glory to deal with. He does have Warsong Wrangler to buff one Vulper Tinger and have that take a VT, but it's not great because the other copied Marsul can just get rid of the Vulper Tinger immediately, and the greater problem of the Elune gets to stick to the board. I wonder if he just takes Rhino here and deviates to a full trample game plan. Oh, it's so tough tough to say, isn't it? Because he could still go Warsong Wrangler for Rhino plus the Volpa Tingers next turn. So I do think I like in this instance going for the Tingers still. Uh, but as you say, Rhino is very valid because he is losing this board, especially with Oracle sticking, Guardian Org Merchant composting as well is so clutch here. Even though there's the possibility to get three Gordons this turn, I think this has got to be <laughs> an Og Merchant composting, right? That is a six minion board you're putting the composting on. And yeah. you can send everything face, honestly. If Glory wants to trade, let him. That's true. The one other thing I was considering is like composting first, triple trade, and then very possibly Org Merchant to finish it off. But I think I agree with your plan uh, more. It sounds like you're just too far ahead on board. What can they possibly do? Oh, he's going to trade two minions here. Okay, fair enough. Maybe this is better against Rinling's rifle is the one way I think that Possessi can okay. lose a hold of this board. But beyond that, Glory is in a ton of trouble. He most certainly is. Trampling Rhino, I think, is almost a necessity right here to kill off the Oracle of a Loon. You can go for, I guess, Wrangler, Volpatinga, and you'd have to pick the Rhino uh, off the Warsong Wrangler at that point, which isn't bad. But again, the Oracle just sticks. They're going to draw a million cards. No matter how you break it down, it's obviously awful, but that just has to be game losing on the spot. I'd agree. Um, the margins between Rhino and not Rhino are probably like 99.9% .9 to lose and 99.91% <laughs> to lose, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but we can see here that any play Possessi has a good follow up against because he just has Grey Bow. He's going to keep a hold of these Guardian Og merchants. But let's be super optimistic here and try to curate the best possible hand for Glory after this point. So he goes Rhino. 
as he trades it down, plays a gray bow. If Glory then top decks Rinling's rifle, can we talk about Explosive maybe pulling him back in the game? Maybe, but I was actually about to lead up into this exact discussion here, first of all, before the Rhino, because this allows him to clear off the minion and put a little bit more stats on the board. Uh, and also, if there is a big minion next turn, like the Teacher's Pet or the Graybow, Rhino can possibly come in to finish it off uh, with an extra 1-1 one, one on the board, maybe. Uh, but of course, after all these trades for Possessi, he just has already a guaranteed super powerful turn with a Loon, a Noyatron, a Loon Mule, whatever you want. Yeah. I like that he's taking all these trades first. If there is the possibility to play a battle guard here, you go for it. Um, he's going to stop with the gray bound now uh, because there's no more Vulper Tingers to be drawn. So leaving one on board, even if there's second Warsong in hand, can't be buffed. So again, crafting that perfect draw for Glory. If we were to go... Piercing shot, Grey Bow. You can't get away with piercing shot, the Org Merchant here, right? They're just too healthy. Uh, and then every burn spell, you're dead way before that works. Uh, I don't know. I can't craft a win condition for him here, I don't think. He's not going to bother killing off the Grey Bow, which makes sense to me here because if you kill it and then put another minion on board, the Grey Bow is coming right back because all of these minions left for Possessi that will gain the death rattle from Greybow um, yep. only have one health. So Glory's just going to try and clear everything in one turn next turn, which is, you know, not really possible. But at the, uh, Possessi just plays a loon, pack mules, peasant, has a great time with his day. Sounds good to me. I'm still unsure as to why only one of the mules is facing the other way. The the plot thickens as to that. As I I don't know. They just play by their own rules. Sometimes breaking the spectator, sometimes not. But either way, for Possessi here, going with the Annoyatron instead, it's just the most, well, obviously annoying board possible. These Divine Shields getting in the way of Rhinos, making it impossible to get through to anything else. Glory can concede whenever he's ready, because this one is over. Yeah, um... It is very much so, but, you know, as we've been doing for formality's sake the past few turns, <laughs> let's craft a win condition. Okay. If he piercing shots the uh, Elune, uh -huh. right? Possessi doesn't have Arbor Up or another 5-drop here. Let's say, I mean, okay, there's Pack Mules, so Glory knows about yeah. more of them being in hand, right? So if he plays a Pack Mule, <laughs> you can then top deck Rindling's Rifle, yeah, okay. Pack Mule, and set up an Explosive Trap. If the, if, whether that's good enough, I still don't think so, but <laughs> that's the best I could think of. I respect it. I respect it. Possessor using the hero power as well this turn, I like, because that's the one the way that you are losing. And, you know, I mean, I guess he just doesn't have any board space anyway. So just play your biggest thing, hero power. And uh, this is lethal next turn, right? Mm hmm. Rinling, nope. That has got to be the game. <laughs> yep, throws it down and a big win for Possessi. The Druid, I think, was likely to get a win at some point. So it's not so much that he gets the Druid over the line that is a big deal. It's the fact that he denies the Hunter a win that is a very, very big deal there. Because for Glory, that deck is just going to continue to struggle, I think. Against the Rogue, we have not been fans of it in that matchup. Against the Warlock, even. We saw it get the win versus Alutemu. But to be honest, that was kind of unlucky for Alutemu to have got through to the end and have found no Bristlebacks, but of healing at the de at the bottom of his deck, deleting all his big threats as well. And so I think this is going to be a close one, but still pretty favored for Possessi from here on in. Definitely so. Um, we could see Glory switch away from the Hunter here because we didn't have symmetrical bands like last series. There is less potential to see a mirror. We could run up into some favorables for Glory here, like the Demon Hunter into Rogue. I think as time has gone on, I have kind of decided that's even more and more favored for the Demon Hunter. Even yeah. for the good Rogue players, it's just too hard to play around Glide while maintaining a solid enough win condition. We could see Handlock versus Demon Hunter, which is another pretty close match up because that one, while I initially thought it must be super Demon Hunter favored, I think good handlock players have maneuvered ways to kind of punish that, especially with the inclusion of the double Altar of Fire. That card alone, I feel like, is the reason Possessi and um, Alutamu felt like they didn't have to auto-ban the Demon Hunter on the other side and could instead ban away Garot Rogue. 
Agreed. Yeah, that was really the uh, the revelation that Alutemu and crew seemed to have last week, inspired in no small part by Alan, who had a one-off altar of fire in his warlock two weeks ago, I believe. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, it caught on and everyone started including two in most of their warlock lists, at least here in Asia Pacific. Possessing with the Garot Rogue now, the first one that we are going to see today, maybe even the last one that we are going to see today, depending on how the bands in the finals go. And, of course, whether or not Possessi can get the win. It's going to be a against the Warlock for Glory. And uh, although, as we've said time and again, a matchup that's got a little bit close, Glory has, I think, shown great understanding in this matchup in terms of priority number one being cheapening those Giants for a turn six or seven push with a Neophyte. Uh, generally, the Rogue, if it gets a halfway decent hand, can still just kill you, even if it has to go in a slightly scrappy way when turn seven or eight rolls around. Yeah, I already thought this was slightly rogue favored even before the latest round of nerfs hit the Warlock and they had uh, farther away to get to their quest. Um, now though, it feels pretty solidly rogue favored, but not to the sense that the Warlock can't use any of their old tricks, namely the Neophyte timed together on back-to-back -back turns when the rogue is trying to get their lethal. But the fact that it's harder to get the Flesh Giants down because it's harder to proc your quest and get those double cheapenings of the Flesh Giant means that the Rogue generally has one or two more turns than they had before, and those turns can mean all the difference. Once again, though, there is the Altar of Fire, which is the X Factor, oh. that card that wasn't there at the beginning, which is something that we saw kind of soloed the matchup for Glory versus Alutamu yesterday. Alutamu had a ridiculously bad draw where all the field contacts and Octobots were in like the bottom half of his deck, which meant that Altar of Fire was very likely to hit big but you can't often curate that as well on average. That's right, it's such a, uh, a volatile weapon, the uh, uh, Altar of Fire, because half the time, like you said, you just delete the best cards and win the game on the spot. The other half of the time, you're deleting Brain Freeze, Org Merchants, Prize Plunderers, like these cards that don't really matter, and you just give them lethal a turn earlier because they don't have to draw their deck at that point. It's a very fickle friend indeed, but one that could be the clutch X Factor for glory if it comes down to it. Possessy, however, with a pretty strong starting hand, and Octobot Shroud, he's got the draw. Colt Neophyte can maybe disrupt some of these early backfires or clear turns. And then he just needs that field contact to make this hand pop. I was wondering if that was Insta Dagger on turn two or Neophyte. Obviously, it doesn't mess with um, just tap for glory, but he did right. keep a card. Maybe it would have messed with coin backfire, but I think the tipping point was that Possessi's on the play, right? He doesn't have that much light. Uh, flexibility to just throw out battle cries which you want to be fuel in hand for field contact so i don't mind holding on to it and now he has access to the octo proc turn um i wonder if he ever <laughs> just to get the flinger back in hand uh <laughs> Unless you're playing one thief, I don't think so, right? The uh, the only thing I consider there is like neophyte, maybe, but even then, doesn't really feel necessary. Glory has a very obvious turn. It's the hand you all, the way you always play this hand, pretty much when you get a nether on and null in hand uh, of a nether on tap null. But it looks like he's actually trying to weave in an extra spell here, okay, to clear off the uh, pen flinger. This is fine, I think. Yeah, I think so. He still gets to have a decent top turn after that. And just removing the flinger, sometimes that comes back to haunt you if you leave it um, an additional battle try for Possess. He hits Hot Streak, which is, you know, not particularly useful on its own, but it's a dumpable card. Honestly, I was kind of looking at Ring Toss. Like, prep Ring Toss can be pretty good for Rogue Secrets if you can get the... Uh dirty tricks as well but prep swindle obviously an awful lot better than that it means that possessy just wow. has so much stuff to do on this turn he could go brain freeze that i guess he could go like octobot brain freeze hot streak as a dumpable card is actually so clutch here with the swindle yes. to keep that playable it's perfect. The hot streak is the optimistic pick where you're like, I have so much to do with my mana that I just yeah. want to um, get rid of that card. And he can still go for the swindle, which will draw him up to 10. Right? Yes. And then he can dump the hot streak. And depending on what comes off the swindle, he can choose to step his field contact or keep the step in hand for the octobot. Two steps. I'm getting the contact back. Yep. Agreed. Hot streak as well. Go oh, clean. I Going into turn six, only 11 cards left in hand. If there's no 
neophytes apologies uh, on the other side of the board like I don't think Possessy will go for it next turn but you could go for it next turn if you're feeling brave but for Glory is the situation already so dire that he has to hit the panic button he has Whoa. altar of fire both garrots are still in Possessy's deck so but that's really the only combo piece he needs, right? Both yes. Ethels, the other Octobot, a Field Contact, and a Shadow Step in hand. I guess the other Field Contact is a bit sad to burn, but Possessi realistically doesn't need it to get to the bottom of his deck with Secret Passage and the other Contact already costing one. Exactly. He can just play the non-combo cards, Prize Plunderer, Gordon, and the uh, pr uh, Neophyte, and then just play Secret Passage and play whatever he gets off of that as well. Um, Alternatively, with 19 cards left in deck, like there's no way that you can get anywhere close to the Baron Scavengers left playable for glory. I think unless you get something a lot more tempting, it's altar time. Could Drain Soul hold out for a turn? <sighs> okay, okay. Yeah, I don't think Possessy can quite hit guaranteed lethal this turn, but oh. if he honestly just ends with everything relevant in hand, Glory doesn't yeah. have a win condition anymore. No, I agree completely. Like, he can even just end with Shadow Step in the uh, field contact again if he absolutely has to and still will be winning the game. Possessy not going for Octobot and Step Octobot, which is a plan we've seen Possessy go for a lot, but I think he's yeah. only interested in finding the other Garot here. Yeah, of course, wants to find the other Garot. I, ideally, wants to find the other Prize Plunderer as well, because, of course, he's played both Swindles. So activating the combo if you don't have the other Prize Plunderer does get a little bit scary. Ooh, Step Neophyte is spicy. Okay, okay. Well, okay, there's the other oh. Garot. It's safely done. I think, yeah, Possessy here clearly showing he only wanted to Step to draw and find Garot in hand, and so he stepped like what he thought was the highest value battle cry minion here, and I agree it is Neophyte at the moment. He doesn't need any additional mage spells, just take a brain freeze because it's cheap, and goes with field contact, and he can prep brain freeze. Okay, yeah, now there is actually no danger whatsoever. I was going to say, it's a little scary if you uh, don't find the other field contact, because again, you would actually struggle to do the combo without any card draw effects. You'd have to go for some weird secret passage play. But now, absolutely no danger whatsoever. He has the draw. He has everything. It is the cleanest possible game that you can get with Garot Rogue, and Possessi is basically guaranteed the win next turn. Board space... <laughs> uh, sure. I mean, okay, okay. He, he he has brain freeze, but I don't think he can play Octobot and two Ethels. Does he need to play Octobot even? Maybe he doesn't, right? He just plays two Ethels, two Garots. Oh, but then he doesn't have board space because he still has to spend one mana on a brain freeze. But obviously this is all triviality, right? Because if he's not winning the game next turn, he just gets all this minion damage waits for Glory to clear the board, and then wins the game the turn after. Yeah, and for Glory throwing down the concede, like, if you're playing against a computer, yes, correct. The game was pretty much just over at that point. I kind of like just passing the turn against Garot Rogue and saying, you actually have to do it here, because there's always a slim chance, even this far down the line, where players are very comfortable with Garot Rogue, that they just have an absolute meltdown and somehow mess things up, kill off their spell damage, shadow step their spell damage. I don't know what it could possibly be, but maybe they mess something up. Uh, but Glory trusting Zessi, I guess, enough to get the job done. And so we're two games to zero up already. Alan is going to be absolutely ecstatic right now because he is one game away from going through to the World Championships. If Possessi wins this one game of Warlock versus Hunter, it's set in stone. Possessi could still win the season and be a back-to-back -back victor, which would be incredibly impre impressive for his own right. But in terms of the representatives going through to the World Championship, this one can lock it out with Possessi taking the win. It will be him and Alan in the World Champs. Yeah, don't worry, Possessi. Maybe most of your regular fans are not necessarily cheering for you because other people need it more than <laughs> you do, but Alan is cheering harder than anyone in the world has ever done. Glory is going to go on the Face Hunter now. 
versus Possessi's last deck, which is a matchup that we've talked about, can be a little bit scary. Um, Alan got it through a while ago with probably the only good Velma we've seen all weekend, and Glory's going to keep a good Velma for himself. Um, the key winning factor for Alan was landing Divine Shield on enough minions that the Soul Rend wasn't enough from Possessi, but um, if Possessi does have a big Soul Rend, that's kind of the turning point that Hunter cannot come back from. And Glory playing at the speed of light here before the uh, reveal has even happened on our uh, spectators. Already got the one drop down, getting uh, the Kolek. Not the one you want, obviously, uh, because you'd rather just get some extra stats, some immediate damage with Refa being the ideal. But it's still okay. He's getting some uh, minions on board, spending his mana proactively in these starting turns, which is the winning play against Warlock. Decent curve to start, whereas for Possessi, he doesn't have any of the small removal spells, which is annoying, but he has minions to play on curve, which would kind of disincentivize the Falmaw from going face, but right. uh, is just going to go for the tap here. It's not waking up next turn, so fair enough. He waits. Neophyte is a very spicy draw. It plays around Coin Solrend, and so... I'm on board with it. Let's throw it down. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting that he doesn't go for it here, though, because even though I don't necessarily think that this next turn from Possessi was the clearest coin soul run, because it doesn't actually catch the um, Fenwa, which would be ideal, it does shut off other coin-based plays, which would be pretty good for Possessi. Possess here going with the clean clear on the board, setting up for a 50-50 as well, obviously, for the Felmor to just sacrifice itself into the null. It's a huge outcome here for Glory. Can't look! Okay. 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 He's a good boy. Glory done with leaning back. He realizes now there's a real chance in this game. He can get rid of the Null with a quick shot, develop the Neophyte, shut oh, yeah. down a Soul Rend for this upcoming turn, and then the hand is, you know, halfway what he wants to see, right? From this point, Hunter just wants to draw Burn Spell, Burn Spell, Burn Spell. Exactly right. Uh, and so for Possessi, it's an awkward turn because going into turn five, there is obviously the biggest threat being Rhino. And so even though you really want to play Tour Guide on this turn to fit in uh, probably just a bristle back in, uh, in all honesty to spend your mana, leaving a 1-1 one, one on the board is potentially absolutely disastrous in terms of how much damage you're taking. And so what do you do about that though? Like tap neophyte is kind of running into the same problem. Tap pass sounds awful. I think Possessi is in a bad enough situation that he cannot afford to play around line Rhino and as it sure. happens, piercing shot, which is also similar for Glory in the situation. So I would just end up on the tour guide tap and bristle back, which is probably better against every non Rhino slash piercing shot play. Possessi agrees as uh, he needs to start getting risky now. Things are not going his way, whereas things are looking pretty good for Glory. Uh, probably just ends up on piercing shot the lifesteal away, right? To deny any healing off of that. Yep, that's right. You can swing into the tour guide as well. I was trying to see if you could do anything fancy with piercing shot the tour guide, but the math just doesn't work out in your favor if you're not immediately getting lethal, right? Because you get two more damage by piercing shotting the 1-1, uh, but the lifesteal makes it net minus, or like uh, it's going to yes. be net one healing for Possessi in that situation. 19 cards still in deck, a long way off from these Bristlebacks doing anything at all. Quest completion is obviously nice, it could maybe keep him alive with the Null as well. Means that he will be down to one health right on the following turn with Hero Power plus the Weapon Swing. Yep, and this tracking is there very likely and not necessary for Glory <laughs> to find Lethal. <laughs> He does it, gets the win on the board. The Hunter getting the win, as we were saying, very, very big deal. The Warlock was the struggle deck 
for Alutemu? Will it be the struggle deck for Possessi as well? Because now for Glory, it's the Demon Hunter, a matchup that, you know, we've been talking about as to how favored it is one side versus the other with those Altars of Fires in there, but generally considered a reasonable matchup for the Demon Hunter. And then the Handlock Mirror, if it all comes Ooh. down to that. This is going to be a nail biter. And the Handlock Mirror yesterday that we saw between, uh, was it Glory and Alutamu? Glory looked a little bit shaky on it. Not that his play was strictly wrong, but um, I think he ended up going for a soul run that left an 8 1 another on, bo on board, which I think yeah. he needed to take a bigger risk than that in that position to have a realistic chance of winning the game. That is a matchup that I feel would be very fitting to see who we potentially send through to the world championship um of course that's only, not the only one we could see because it looks like glory has queued up oh sorry it is the handlock mirror before we get to oh. see handlock versus demon hunter potentially i am Happy Gia. As I've said many times, I absolutely love this matchup. We saw a blowout yesterday for Alutemu against uh, Glory, was it, in the Warlock Mirror, which he just absolutely destroyed his opponent in. So hopefully Glory gets a, a slightly better go of it here, hitting backfire in the starting hand, but tossing a Flesh Giant right there, it looked like. That's such a clear difference in opinion that we saw right from that mulligan. Um, like, Possessi kept Flesh Giant, and he right. didn't even have the back backfire to begin with. I feel like if you're keeping Flesh Giant, like, um, it makes a lot of sense in the mirror because it's one of the best ways to get ahead, but it's more supported if you have backfire, so I'm a bit surprised from Glory there, but still an amazing hand, right? He can coin backfire if he ends up with a tour guide at some point or in another on the curve. Looks very nice. Yeah, that's what he's looking for. There it is. Oh, there are both of them. Null and a Netheron for glory. Uh, neither playable on this next turn, obviously, but he has a couple ways he can maneuver this. We're obviously looking at tap being pretty high priority, but the two plays are either tap and then a Netheron tap Null next turn, or Null this turn into backfire a Netheron next turn. And I like that he's going about it this way. I think it correctly shows that taps are very important in this matchup. Yeah, if you can weave it in here, it's just so high priority to make sure that you're getting the kind of conditional discount on your giant. You can only yeah. do it once per turn. Um, and also getting farther through your deck because fatigue will become a real concern. Meanwhile, on Possessi's side, he deliberately went up to 10 despite the chance of overdraw. That's something you can do in this matchup if it makes your follow-up plays better. Totally reasonable here. And he's reaching for Soul Run Mortal Coil, which looks pretty clean to me. Yeah, the one other thing I would consider is, you know, if you're going Rend Mortal Coil, you'd obviously rather draw a card than discard it because it has the same effect on Fatigue. But you could consider Touch first and then Soul Rend because this is the balance we always talk about in the Warlock Mirror. Discarding cards from your deck is good-ish. It's good in terms of fatigue, obviously, to get there faster and kill your opponent with the uh, Tamsin, which is so crucial in this matchup once fatigue does roll around, as it often does. But if you burn, f uh, well, not Flesh Giant, because he's got both in hand, but say a Netheron or a Raised Dead or a Backfire can be the most important card, that all of a sudden deletes any value that you've gotten from destroying another card in your deck. But because you could, we could only name like three or four really good ones, I am interested in burning more than less here. Most of the oh. powerful cards are in his hand with the two Flesh Giants and one Raised Dead. True. Um, he goes for the other order though, um, not looking to lose any overall value because it is there is still something to be said about actually having every card in your deck or more of them enter your hand so you can get base value from the card itself. Um, it is... Of course, just an answering play, so Glory has all the initiative here. Access to Tour Guide if he likes, but uh, just to get it out of hand, create two spaces for the Raised Dead to get back the Knoll and the Another on. That's right. He is just, uh, I think you keep applying the pressure here. The best they could do was answer with a Soul Rend. Uh, so the best they can do next turn is if they're lucky, have another Soul Rend, which isn't very likely at that point. And so, as you said, uh, it's really just about f uh, efficiency of quest completion that's stopping him from instantly going for that play. Uh, because otherwise, you know, he wants to go tour guide tap, but then he's back up to the full hand again anyway. Uh, but in the end, he's just accepting that he's not going to get efficient quest completion. Going for Neophyte to disrupt instead, which is pretty clever, and still going in with that all-in minion development plan. 
that. I like this a lot from Glory. Like we could have seen if he wanted to be more efficient from the uh, for the quest, dump the neophyte and the tour guide, right? And then tap and then raise that. But then you're not able to play both the null and the another on um, this play from Glory. It does sacrifice a bit of efficiency with quest completion by wasting two health essentially. But he gets maximum tempo, and this is where the game is at at the moment. He saw it was expensive for Possessi to deal with the first board, so give him another one to deal with. Well, it looked like Possessi was just reaching for the uh, the Flesh Giant at the end of that turn there. Maybe it was one man off being playable, which would, of course, have just left him dead to Battlegrounds Battlemaster. But here, he's safe for another turn. He's chunking a lot of damage, but that's not necessarily the end of the world because what Possessi is setting up for is that one big swing turn when he can turn things around with a big Flesh Giant Baron Scavenger play all out of range of just a Soul Rend on its own. And so Glory needs to be... Hopefully, for his sake, closing out the game before then. Sorry, reaching for a soul rend of his own. I really don't like deleting your own board here. It's probably his right. biggest asset. I would hear the argument for a very aggressive Tamsin here just for quest completion. Like, Ooh, uh, interesting. Okay, the numbers don't work out very nicely here because using Unstable Shadow Blast on a tour guide gets you 7 out of 8, and then using the zero cost one would overcomplete by 4, which is not ideal. Um, so is there ever a chance in Drain Soul? Okay, Glory is just going to go for Flesh Giant here, which is in keeping with his game plan of maximum tempo focus on board. I like it a lot, and I think there's a very reasonable chance, as we were talking about, with Glory needing to go for one swing back the board turn, that Tamsin raised it. Uh, sorry, Tamsin Soul Rend is going to be the play later on in the game uh, in order to uh, deal that 10 damage to clear the board, whereas 5 damage often will not be good enough. And that could be this turn, because Possessi's finally getting Flesh Giants of his own. Um, deliberately not playing Raised Dead, even though by playing Raised Dead first, he could have fit in a Cult Neophyte as well. Uh, for uh -huh. two reasons, Raised Dead would have left him dead to the Battlegrounds Battlemaster if it didn't progress his quest. And also, I think he wants the Giants in the Raised Dead pool before he uses that spell. Mm, so Tamsin Unstable Shadow Blast is just a bit awkward, isn't it? You can obviously use both to kill off a Flesh Giant and get you up to six out of eight quest completion, and then I guess tap to finish out the turn, but then you're trading Flesh Giants, which I don't really want to do. Uh, alternatively, it could be Backfire into Bristleback that deals six, but even that, again, without a, a Mortal Coil or a Touch of the Nathrezim is a little bit awkward. Yeah, he was hoping to get something off of that from this Backfire, but doesn't hit it, so I think he will end up going tour guide tap play another giant just trade giant oh wait his uh -oh. quest is awkward here as well oh okay 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 that's really clutch now he can kill um just one yeah send the other one face because now he's not dead thanks to the touch healing um, to Battlegrounds Battlemaster. If he had not gotten healing there in a good clear he was very much in danger of dying to BGBM on the backswing and now for Possessi, we're looking at a really weird turn, right? He's got the wall that he can put up in the way, so at least have some defensive capabilities on this turn. But he doesn't have the removal to go alongside it. These giants are still a big, big threat, which kind of forces him into starting off with a trade. And you never want to be the chicken in this matchup. You want to be constantly sending your flesh giant's face. Yeah, I don't know why a chicken would not have access to doing that, but okay. <laughs> it's like playing chicken, right? You don't want to be the first one to, to blink. Is that an actual game? I thought it was just an idiom of playing <laughs> a game of chicken. It, it, it's, I think it's an idiom that stems from an actual game of just the first one oh. to, I don't know, do, you know, if you're driving towards each other like in Herbie the movie and you first one to yeah, drive the I'm other telling, way. That's what I'm telling my grandkids Squid Game is about then. <laughs> I have no idea what an actual game of chicken is, but um, Possessi did go for the play you are outlining, which is creating the Wall of Taunts and also playing every other single minion because he realizes that the six damage on Glory's Flesh Giant doesn't particularly leave Possessi that many good trades. He's just trying desperately to stay alive. The big deal that the six damage did here is prevent Preventing a soul rend from letting the flesh giant go face. I wonder. 
And depending on what the quest completion is here for Glory, he has lethal, right? With double bristleback, raise dead tap. I don't know exactly. Seven out of eight, though, it looked like there, unless he was mousing over Possessi's quest. And so, if that's the case, win the game? Uh-huh. So yeah, he's on stage two. Just tap here. Shoot, shoot the taunts. Stand 10 damage face. It's got to be clear now, right, that he sees Possessi going down to 10. Uh-huh. Yes, that's the good play. Oh, no. Glory, yes, Glory. Come on. Come on. No. No. Why? Come on. It's still there. It's still there. Okay. He stopped. He stopped. He stopped the tree. It's going face. He sees it. We're going. No. No, 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 no. Wait, Glory. No. He's trading. Glory, it's 10 damage. No. No. Oh, my God. He just saw it. He just saw it. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Oh no! That was a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, Glory, you're the world champion! Come on, please! Zessie doesn't have counter lethal though because of the two three threes. Glory's camera has left the building, by the way. Oh, oh he's wait, so wait, wait, embarrassed. He's just not moving. The camera still works. Yeah, yeah. It's only 22 damage for Possessi here. He can heal six with the 3-3 three, three attacking twice and now with the touch. And then the quest progression. I still feel like Glory's way in the lead because of the difference in health here. But right now, Possessi has a flash giant where Glory has no more left. Gotta be the VGBM. Have the 3-3 three, three, yeah. take a VT and then kill the other 3-3. Three, three. And then Flesh Giant VT again and then go face. Oh, the six healing is so clutch as well, though. Obviously, Solrend is a, a beautiful clear on this board. Uh, but man, I'm still reeling. I'm reeling too, and so is Glory, but this is crunch time, right? If you make a big mistake like that, the most important thing is putting that behind you, figuring out how you can win this game, because I think he's still in the lead. He can go for Soul Rend here. Maybe you raise dead first to see what you get. Your giants cost zero now. So if you can just go like Soul Rend and play two giants, like Possessi's out of good answers, right? He can also raise dead with Tan. Exactly. The neophyte interaction. That's, yeah. Very clever. We're talking about <sighs> no flesh giants. A little sad, but whatever. He's still heading into fatigue very soon. Three out of eight, I believe, on quest completion. Losing the scavenger and the knoll hurts, but an extra raise dead goes an incredibly long way in this matchup. Remaining cards for Possessi. Nothing game ending, honestly. It's unrealistic to get another on to cost one. Yep. He's out of big card draw effect, so he can't win the race with Blightborn Tamsin either. Uh, Going for not really seeing the way to victory for Possessi. I guess the one race that can that get him the Flesh Giants? That's his best way. Okay. Oh man, but he knows Glory has guaranteed double soul run next turn, right? The copied one, and he will always see the bottom of his deck for the other. Correct. Unless he also plays Altar of Fire and Possessi hopes that the other soul run is in the remaining two cards. All of Stormwind shall yep. my yeah, he's going for it. Okay. Biggest push he could manage. Uh, not sure where Glory's quest is at, but... I mean, Possessi can't be bothered about giving Glory fatigue here as a potential disadvantage. All he needs is the board, or rather, his only avenue to victory is the board, because Glory has far too much health for Possessi to mess about winning um, without the board. So he's one damage off lethal this turn, right? Because he can go tap, which deals the four damage necessary, play Tamsin, and then play Raised Dead, which deals three to his opponent. So it's one off again after being apparently one damage off lethal earlier on in the game as well. Um, and uh, he has to divert instead now. I mean, he has a very powerful play, obviously, and I think he can figure out with neither of the uh, backfires available to Possessi, he's just always alive here and should be able to close out the game next turn. Um, but going raise that first does complicate it, right? Because I think the best avenue to victory probably still involved getting Tamsin down this turn. Yes. 
Although, if you do that, you don't necessarily get to clear the board and play Tamsin, which I was going to say is fine as long as the Tamsin's in the hand so you have that guaranteed done without any awkward health having to be used on your own fatigue rather than fatiguing Possessi. I think it's a lock either way though, right? Because if you've been keeping track, there's no healing for Possessi, no way to generate healing. And so next turn, Tamsin enters your hand just due to fatigue. And then you just play her in tap. It's guaranteed. That's true. Works out either way. Well spotted there. Uh, Glory with... I'm just going to call this a recovery, right? Obviously, mm. it was a disaster to miss the lethal there. But I am very glad he didn't get flustered enough to just continue throwing the game from that point. I've seen that happen. I've done that many times, just dying from embarrassment. Uh, but... Glory's a pro, right? It happens even to the best of us, and you need to be able to pull it together after the fact. Glory is a pro, but this is, as I've been saying historically, Glory's biggest weakness as a player. You know, everyone makes mistakes like that sometimes. Some more than others, obviously, and that is a particularly egregious one. However, Glory, I think, as soon as he starts doubting himself, as I've said many times, that's when things start getting messy. He has... Uh, difficulty in coming back from situations like this, I think, because he just gets embarrassed. As you can see, literally hiding his face from the camera. It's understandable, of course, because that was a very embarrassing mistake to make. But I hope that he can get his head in the game above anything else for this final game, even if historically he has struggled with that, because it's all going to come down now to Warlock versus Demon Hunter. And if that was a mentally taxing game, this one is going to be on another level. It really is. The handlock mirror is complex. I really like the way Sotal and Raven put this yesterday. It's complex in visible ways, like where if a player makes a right. very cool play, we can see what they did, right? They maybe created more mana for their flesh giants by playing a bunch of spells that let them get quest completion in the same turn. And if a player makes a big mistake, it's also very visible, just like what happened a while ago. With the OTK Demon Hunter matchup, it's a lot more complex and we don't necessarily see the genius of plays until it comes together later on and it's very subtle ways that the demon hunter can do this as well because mm. they need to be thinking about glide at all times how much their opponent's flesh giant costs and the handlock player needs to also be dumping cards for a glide which the benefits of that you might not see until much later in the game and here it is Possessi two games up at the start, losing with his Warlock twice now against the Hunter and in the mirror. But this is the ultimate test for this new Warlock 2.0, the teched version with double altar of fire that transitioned Possessi and Alutemu from banning Demon Hunter over to banning Rogue because they felt they could actually have a fighting chance in this matchup. It's not going to be easy, however, with Glory Glide already in hand, already outcastable on turn four. But whether or not he goes for that on turn four is another question, because he, of course, has to consider his own quest completion. Yeah, this is... I mean, despite it being a Glide on turn four, it's the most awkward card to have to use before you get to Glide. I mean, outside of Ilganoth, I guess, because right. <laughs> Acrobatics is going to draw him cards without completing the quest. And you're going to put all those cards back in your deck if you Glide the turn after. And you're down an Acrobatics in your deck in that situation, which can be pretty bad. So I wouldn't fault Glory for like deviating from the Glide next turn. He could set up quest completion with Sigil right. into Acrobatics next turn. And I honestly prefer that. I mean, you have to play the acrobatics before glide anyway if you want to outcast it, which, you know, as you were alluding to, you don't want to do. You want to redraw a hand that's full of card draw. Uh, you kind of want to redraw Sigil as well, actually. But given that you're already wasting the card draw no matter what by just going for it next turn, you may as well do a quest pro progression. They're probably going to keep drawing cards anyway. Handlock doesn't really have any ulterior game plans. They're a very face-up deck. And so uh, Glide on turn five, as it is looking to be, is still very powerful.
I would agree, but already Possessi starting to get some measure of threats down. You don't usually see handlocks going for knolls that are this expensive, but in this particular matchup where as soon as turn 4 rolls around, they are scared of getting glided, they want to start dumping cards from their hand and not getting too greedy with the discounts on Flesh Giant, just making sure that they don't get too wrecked by um, the shuffle back. Okay, double zero amount of Tusk Piercer and the potential to draw with Arcanist and Tusk Piercer, which usually I would say no, those are kind of good cards that you want to hold on to, but Arcanist is kind of one of those cards you want to dump before Glide anyway, just so that you don't draw it. Yeah, but the thing is, what's the value of drawing more cards here if you're going to Glide them mostly back next turn? I, I haven't got that like far yet. Playing both of them. I mean, I like one Tusk Piercer here, just kill the tour guide, and then next turn you can either re equip over that Tusk Piercer just to delete the other Tusk Piercer from your deck and then glide, or just glide straight up. Demons. Demons. Um, I mean, I, I play though, I don't really want to play the Arcanist and get two more draws if you're going to glide next turn. It's really close because I kind of want to play the Arcanist even ignoring the acrobatics effect, just because it's a card I don't really want to draw after Glide. He's already played a Sigil, he's played an acrobatics, like he needs to draw card draw post Glide here to have any chance. Well, in that case, barring Neophyte, he can just play it next turn, right? Which means you don't have the acrobatics sure. aura anymore yeah. and then Glide after. You have a little bit mana flexibility less after the Glide, but oh. I don't know. I still think he can get utility out of the Arcanist and now he has no choice. He can't play it and Glide. Yeah, absolutely. This is a uh, very simple turn now. You just rip the glide and uh, probably keep the weapon intact as well. I would guess uh, theoretically could play the other one, I guess, as well, just to, again, make sure you don't draw Tusk Piercer because when, when you already have one equipped, it becomes a less effective uh, card to draw. Yeah, I agree. I like this. Because what you would do if you didn't equip the other Tusk Piercer and drew it back from the Glide, for example, is you still have to wait two turns to get the draw from the yeah. next Tusk Piercer. A bit slow, so I do favor this line. Meanwhile, uh, Possessi obviously devastated by the Glide, but the upside is he stuck eight damage on the board, which is a lot. It's not irrelevant to Glory here. He happens to have a big removal, but um, not necessarily the healing that he might need in the future. Whoa, that's a spicy top deck though, with it being playable next turn. Uh, not quite this turn as the Raised Dead, of course, doesn't complete second quest progression. Uh, but in terms of post-glide hands, this is really not bad. So because the Raised Dead doesn't have anything particularly exciting right now, is it just tour guide, I think? Um, do you ever just play a Bristleback? If in the world where that sticks and attacks, it cheapens the giant even further. It's a card you don't want to draw back in case there's second glide, and it's just more pressure on the board. It's true, but you're low-key playing as face onto here, right? Which, as we talked about, you don't want to have too many minions on board because they can go for a big fell screen blast. Uh, but I think here with four cards in hand, it's kind of unlikely they have spell damage, Moag, and fell screen blast. And so just throwing it down makes sense to me. Okay, he's going to kill his Neophyte so he can raise dead the Neophyte in particular and have the mana left over to play Tour Guide. But he's doing the thing, Whoa. right? Not playing another minion because of what you said. That is an insane top deck, though. That's Kurtris in hand. Oh, you're just ripping that, surely. That's the nuts. Unless you can play Kurtris on this turn, which I don't think there's any possibility mm. for. I don't think so. I mean, you can go Arcanist Immolation to dump that before Glide. I would hear the argument for that. These are valuable cards, but um, I'm not necessarily sure if you want to draw them back immediately. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, Illidari studies. studies first. You might not be able to outcast the Glide, though, which I'm sure you want to outcast that. Possessi just raised it. Yeah, agreed completely. He's just going for your line of play to clear the board first. It's a little risky because, of course, against Handlock, it can be very good to have these uh, uh, big board clears. But against Giant, uh, Immolation Aura plus the uh, Arcanist doesn't even clear anyway. And so it makes sense to, to me, sorry, to just throw it down and then pray your opponent doesn't draw those big threats. 
Yeah, because you glided back a ton of them and Possessi is just so oh. far from getting Scavenger online. The Neophytes, they're good, but two turns from now, right? They don't disrupt Glory from doing what he wants to do here, which is just play the big K. Yep, special K oh, himself. Backfire is a very, very big one, of course. We are looking for Giant, even a Nether on Knowles here. Anything that actually applies some pressure. As uh, Glory obviously down to 10, one big threat could be enough to close this one out. Might be that Possessi is looking for Altar of Fire more than anything at this point. We are looking at so many combo pieces left in Glory's deck. Thankfully for him, he has the Fell Screen Blast safe in hand right now. But Ilgi himself still in there. Moarg, Guild Trader. Digital is clutch. It is. And I think with the uh, the Colt Neophytes, Glory is probably still at least one turn away from going for uh, the combo lethal with Ilganoth still costing four and obviously Acrobatics potentially costing up to five on this turn. But the important fact is he is getting there very quickly. And even just this Kurtress alone is really scary for Possessing. Uh -huh. It's true. Possessing somehow down to 17 already. Um, I don't think he touches his own Neophyte. It's not quite that scary yet, right? Oh, could be wrong. Because with a Neophyte Aura, right? If you assume that yeah. the Ilganoth is in the original hand, he only has two mana to deal 10 damage. A bit unlikely. Oh, he's actually touching just to create hand space. I see. He wants to have wow. Backfire to give him the maximum chances of playing an Altar of Fire. Oh my god. It's actually going to come down to that, isn't it? Glory, I don't think can ever hit lethal on this turn now with both fell screen blasts in hand you can't get i beam in outcast to get it down to one mana does he ever like do a board based game plan here like you can play all the minions and one fell scream <sighs> you can fit in the spectral site as well and depending on what you get deviate oh ill <laughs> I think Glory has turned the corner, even if Possessi finds the Altar of Fire. So next turn, at the very least, right, it's uh, 6, 12, it's 24 damage. So even if every spell damage is burned from uh, Glory's deck, Possessi is still just going to die. Gia, it's all going to come down to the grand finals. <sighs> It means that Glory and Alan are going to duke it out for the right to enter the World Championship alongside Possessi, represent APAC, for Glory the chance to be the back-to-back -back World Champion, and for Alan the chance to prove that the rest of APAC outside of Japan is pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, representing every other country in the entire region, I guess, is Alan and here. Casters. <laughs> yes, exactly. Representing the casters as Glory. No blunders here, no missing lethal. This is a billion damage on this turn. Possessi throws down the clap, waves goodbye. I'm sure he's upset, but at the very least, it was a much stronger day of play from Possessi. I think most of his games seemed very much spot on. Glory, obviously, getting the very shaky road to victory, but we will still be seeing Possessi in the World Championships, being our victor from Season 1. And look at that, Gia. This is what I I am talking about. Glory gets the win, but still head in his hands. The pressure is unbelievable on him now. It's just mind-blowing to me that somebody who has been at the highest peak of Hearthstone competitive environment is still able to feel the pressure. He doesn't get complacent. It means every bit as much to him as it did for everybody else. And just for Glory, honestly, this entire season must have been some whiplash for him, right? The majority of the season, he was just trying to stave off relegation. At the last moment, snuck into playoffs and got a good enough seeding to make sure that he was on equal footing with the majority of the field. And then today, for the most part, playing some very clean Hearthstone, and yep. then one crucial error just caused his entire mindset to crumble here. Not so far that he couldn't pull it together against Possessi. I think this Demon Hunter game was very, very cleanly done from Glory. A lot of small margins and small decisions that he got right, things that we were talking about and consider 